So, if you had something like butane, and we wanted to look at the uh, bonding that occurs between two carbon atoms. Uh, if you wanted to write this out, it would look something like this. What I just wrote above that is actually the shorthand version of it. So these are four carbons, and they're all surrounded by hydrogens. And uh, these would be considered covalent bonds between each of, each of the atoms. Covalent bond is a sharing of electrons. So in other words, to make a single bond, you need two electrons. One electron comes from this carbon, one electron comes from this carbon, boom, that's a bond. Okay? And the bond is evenly distributed between the two atoms, since the electronegativities are the same. In other words, it's a nonpolar covalent bond. So, <clears throat> but what about uh, electrostatic attractions or intermolecular bonds amongst different molecules? They're much weaker, but they're very important. So, for example, if I have a, area of the molecule where the electrostatic charge is kind of shifting ever so slightly such that uh, this part of the molecule is now uh, delta minus meaning that it has a slight negative charge and this part has a slight positive charge well if I bring that close to another butane molecule and at some moment in time, this side's delta plus and this side's delta minus. In other words, the uh, electrostatic charge uh, is moving in such a way or shifting at the right moment so that the le this left side of this molecule is delta plus. It's going to be attracted to this uh, delta minus uh, side of this molecule. So that will create what's called a uh, London dispersion force. And uh, this is uh, an intermolecular bond. These guys are pretty weak. All right, so these butane molecules, they're not very sticky, All right, which is why butane has such a uh, low boiling point. But we'll talk more about that in a little, little while. So <clears throat> let's try another intermolecular bond. Write that here. So this will be in some molecular bond number two. So we don't confuse it with the covalent bond, uh, which is the sharing of electrons. These are actually um, just sort of attractions between different molecules. There's dipole-dipole. Interactions. All right, and um, this happens when the positive end of one molecule attracts the negative of the other. For example, let's say instead of dealing with a nonpolar uh, compound like we did in, in the London dispersion, we did something like acetone. Now acetone uh, contains an oxygen. 
which is very electronegative. And uh, as a result, it's going to pull some of the electrons in this double bond towards itself to make a slight uh, negative charge on that end. And the oxygen atom is going to be slightly positive. And let's see another acetone molecule is close by. Well, same thing's going to happen. Oxygen is going to be delta minus. Carbon is going to be delta plus. And look what happens. Uh, it's going to form a dipole-dipole uh, interaction, meaning that since there's now a minus and a plus here on the oxygen and the carbon, uh, it forms a uh, two poles, like the poles of a magnet, right? Opposites attract. Uh, north and south pole is another way to remember it. And uh, if the same thing happens with this other molecule here, then the plus of this guy is going to be tracked to the minus of that guy. So this would be your intermolecular bond or uh, or dipole-dipole interaction between the two. And these guys are a little bit uh, stronger. These are these are kind of middle of the road. They're not too weak. In strength. All right. So uh, to break apart these uh, th these molecules, it's going to take a little bit more energy than it would uh, butane. That's acetone. So. Finally, we get to the strongest uh, intermolecular bond. Let's spell. And um, this one's probably the most popular. You, you see in a lot of uh, things in, in biology. And uh, it's a hydrogen bond. And hydrogen bond is it's a dipole interaction with a hydrogen and an O or an N or uh, some, some very uh, highly electronegative uh, atom in relation to hydrogen. So that's oxygen or uh, nitrogen. So most common uh, example is of course water. Well water, uh, if, we, if we break it down a little bit, uh, we have <clears throat> The uh, valence electron from the hydrogen, which is one, is donating to this bond here. And uh, one of oxygen's valence electrons are um, donating to make the covalent bond here. Same thing with this guy here. Now, oxygen is donating two valence electrons to make the two bonds. And uh, hydrogen is donating its one. But oxygen has six valence electrons. So they're actually going to take the form of lone pairs right here, these four. Okay, so if we were to draw that over here, because of the electronegativity of oxygen, uh, it's not only going to draw those lone pairs a little bit closer to itself, it's also going to draw the um, electrons of this single bond here a little bit closer to itself, such that oxygen is going to be pretty negative. And hydrogen is going to be uh, pretty positive. So if we draw another water molecule near there, and again, we have a, a delta negative on the oxygen, along with a delta positive on the hydrogen, meaning a slightly uh, negative charge 
on the O and a slightly positive on the H, more so than previous two examples. Uh, we're going to get a pretty strong bond between this minus and plus now. This is a hydrogen bond. And uh, these are the strongest of these three examples of intermolecular bonds. And it's the reason why water uh, takes a lot longer to boil, to boil. It takes a lot more heat than acetone because these molecules are, are more difficult to break apart to send them into, into the gas phase. And um, Hydrogen bonding is uh, really a, a big part of uh, all of chemistry and, and even biology. You find it a lot in nature, for example, um, if you take a, uh, let's say a DNA strand like, I don't know, I'm just making up this order. You have a guanine molecule uh, attached to a thymine, attached to an adenine, attached to cytosine and so on. Well, you know that the base pairs are going to go something like this if you've taken, uh, anybody's taken Bio 101 knows this, right? <clears throat> so then you get kind of like these two strands that are really, really long. I've only drawn out four uh, nucleotides joined together, but they're actually billions. And uh, in us humans, they're cut in 45 different places to be packed in 46 chromosomes. Uh, wound really tightly, but it, it, if you stretch out those chromosomes, what you're going to have is a ladder okay, of the, uh, the G and the C, the T and the A, the A and the T, and the C and the G. And when you twist it, what do you get? You get a double helix, right? That's what DNA is, the, the shape of DNA. Yeah, Watson Crick uh, won the Nobel Prize in 1953 when they discovered that. But what one thing they found in their discovery was that if, if, you, if you untwist this helix to make this ladder, it's, it's kind of like, a, um, like these two strands are being zipped. And what's zipping them is hydrogen bonding. This is hi the guanine is hydrogen bonded to the cytosine, uh, thymine and adenine are hydrogen bonded, and so on and so forth. So you have something like this. If you actually draw out the chemical structure of the different uh, DNA molecules, this would be an example of one DNA base pair. Again, there's billions of these guys attached together inside your, your chromosomes, and inside the nucleus of your cell. But this would be an example of the three hydrogen bonds uh, that attach uh, your guanine and your uh, to, to your cytosine. And um, you can see the negative uh, oxygen is attracted to the hydrogen even though it's on a different uh, molecule. So <clears throat> with that hydrogen bonding you probably have some really um, uh, unorganized uh, DNA. Uh, who knows Who knows what you look like right without it. So that's uh, the last uh, intermolecular bond of the three. It's the strongest and um, it's also why when you fill up a glass of water I don't know if you've noticed that it it kind of like comes to the top and curves like that because those water molecules are so attracted to each other they, they don't want to spill over right and uh, there's lots of other interesting examples of hydrogen bonding in nature you can read about but those are the three intermolecular bonds hydrogen bonding dipole dipole interactions which are a little bit weaker and the weakest are the London dispersion.